important to note that, that PV Mapper as a general framework, which, which Dave uh, mentioned, is, is usable for more than just PV siding. So from this point, we can start a new project, and we could use PV Mapper to site additional uh, sorts of, of facilities, such as a community center or a park. Um, of course, many of the, I'll go ahead and delete all sites here. That will start us a new project. Of course, there's a warning here. We wouldn't want you to do this accidentally. And if we wanted to site a hypothetical community center slash park in Idaho Falls, Idaho, the home of Idaho National Laboratory, uh, we could start to do that. So here we have Idaho Falls. Uh, you'll notice our scoreboard is, is full of tools that may or may not be appropriate. So we'll go to the Tool Module Selector. Here we can turn on and off tools. Uh, while we may enjoy proximity to a river for a, a, a park or a city center, or we may enjoy a certain amount of land area that, that might be an important siting concern. We won't enjoy uh, most of these tools, such as uh, while sunny days are nice, we don't really need the, the exact irradiance solar source. We won't need proximity to transmission or distribution lines, and we don't, uh, the social acceptance tools are all based on uh, nimbyism for siting PV, so we can turn all those off. So now you can see we have a rather slim uh, scoreboard. It could be that our hypothetical municipality has a KML file, which is a, a file type that's used to, to transfer GIS mapping data. We may have a KML file here of potential park sites. There are a lot of them, so there's a warning. If we'd have many tools on, it would take a while to load this. We don't have many tools on, so I'll click OK. Here you can see an, a number of our potential park sites. And they're all listed here in the scoreboard horizontally. We only have our, our gross area tool, which currently has a weight of 0. I'll go ahead and give that a weight of 10. I'll go into the utility function. Um, our planners have, have told me that there's about a minimum size of, of well, a maximum size of about 6 acres, or 1 one hundredth of a square mile here that, that uh, we'll want. So we can change we can express that in our utility function, and we immediately see some scores starting to change. There's, there's also, in addition to a maximum size that we're looking for, there's a minimum size. I can drag this up and say about uh, half that size, or about three acres, is really our minimum effective size to fit in the park and community center that we're hypothetically planning. You can see immediately now our scores are starting to take shape. Site A is starting to look uh, less desirable. Um, of course, we have distance here to the Snake River. That's the only river we have in the area. Um, ideally, I'd like to be within walking distance of the Snake River, so I can adjust this utility function. We'll make it a, a gentle cutoff for about two miles distance here, which is a quite small distance on this current graph. And then we'll have it drop off just to about a score of 60 after that, because being far away from the river won't necessarily prohibit our development maybe down 40. I'll hit OK there. And again, we can see uh, uh, we're now quickly able to differentiate some of these initial sites based on their distance to the river, if it's walking distance or not. So um, by now you're thinking this is a pretty limited set of tools to be able to site a community center. However, we can add new tools to the scoreboard by loading data from KML files. We'll add a distance score from KML here. First thing is that we want to develop our community center within our city limits. So I'll open up a, a polygon of our city boundary. I'll give it a name. And we have this new tool based on distance to or from the uh, city boundary. We can edit its utility functions so that instead of being uh, within 100 miles of default of the city boundary, we want to be within just about 37 feet of that city boundary. Click OK, and we can immediately see it looks like Site J has been uh, located outside of our city. That's uh, not a good thing. Otherwise, the rest of the sites appear to be inside. There are other data layers we may want to build, but before we do that, let's change the weight of city limits. That's going to be substantially more important than these other tools. We'll give it a weight of 25. And nearest river, since it's not as important, we've decided, we'll give that a weight of 2. And now you can see Site J's average score has plummeted, given that it's outside the city limits and we've put the city limit weight uh, up substantially. 
So um, it turns out our community center is also going to have need a connection to the city fiber optic network. I'll go ahead and add that as a layer. Um, all these, in addition to being added as score tools, are located in our layer list. So I can enable it here, and you can see that city fiber optic network extends uh, quite substantially around the city here. However, our engineers have told me that they can't expand the actual fiber network. Where they, they can only build out uh, copper lines. So that's going to give uh, copper lines really only have a suitable range of less than 1,000 feet. So I'll go into our utility function. And again, we'll set the, the needed range that we have, set it to about 370 feet or a tenth of a mile. And we can again see Site J being built outside of the city is also far outside of our city fiber optic network. Um, site B here is uh, located quite close, but Site C is also about 800 feet away, giving a score of zero. Site A is in between. It's going to cost us uh, more than, than it would for other sites to build out that copper line, but we can do that. Uh, also, Site H uh, is in the same bracket. It's about 370 feet away, which, which may be cost prohibitive, but it's, it's not necessarily going to stop us. It'll just be a detractor to that site. The final layer I'll add is, is existing parkland. Um, ideally, our new park and civic center would be located far from existing parks. Um, to increase uh, equity around the city, that all citizens have some reasonable access to city parks. Here you can see these green blocks on the map are our existing parklands. Up until now, we've been wanting to locate close to existing features, which would look something like this. Uh, but now I'll reverse these numbers in our score functions, so we want to be a little bit far. Uh, this is in units of miles, so that means we'd ideally like to be one mile away from an existing park or more. So anything uh, beyond that will receive a score of 100. So you can see that um, this is also a, a pretty helpful differentiator between our various site types. We have uh, 1,200 and 1,500 feet away from the nearest park for sites E and D, which gives them a rather low score. They're pretty close to existing park infrastructure, as is site I and F. But uh, looks like site B is, is looking pretty good. It's, it's past the mustard of most of our our criteria that we put into the scoreboard. We can verify that using the summary report. Uh, we see that Site B is pushed right up to the top with an average score of 95, and with above average scores in all of its differentiating tools. Uh, the next best site, Site G, has a, a limiting. It's just underneath the gross area that we'd like, uh, maybe not uh, far enough to, to make it not um, up for consideration, but it's, it, it is a concern. Uh, site F looks like it's far too close to an existing park. In fact, you can see a green blob of existing park in that map preview. And uh, on down, most of these other sites have uh, one or two critical issues with them. So 